of a sudden you become this famous individual. Um, and back then, it wasn't as harsh as it is today because you never know when you're being filmed or whatever the case may be. You, there's always eyes upon you, or on you, I should say. But, uh, you know, it's hey, it's a good place to be. But there's, unfortunately, there are some, some downfalls because you never know who's filming you, who's watching you, who's setting you up. Yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, sure. Along your career, I, I love to hear about game changers. Uh, Bill Walton, the NBA All Star, was a partner of mine in my last business, and I loved hearing oh, his. Oh. <laughs> great, great guy, right? You're fantastic. Yeah, he, he's always got lots of good stories, and I enjoyed all of them. But is, is there a couple big game changers that come to mind? I mean, obviously, we, we read in the press, and we can look back at your years of fighting. And there's a few that really stand out, but what about the ones that stand out in your mind? Well, they, those were, you know, the Roberto Duran fight, um, the not the loss, but the No Mas fight. Right. It was Tommy Hearns, Tommy Hearns, who was considered uh, unstoppable. I mean, impossible to to, to challenge. Uh, when I when I made a comeback, well, I made a lot of comebacks, but when I made <laughs> a comeback against Marvin, it's Marvin Hagler. It's just it was just those challenges that that put me. Uh, on that, on that, on that platform, I should say. Was um, there was there ever a time when your manager came to you and said, "Hey, Ray, we've got to do this fight," and it was kind of in your court to say yes or no to it, and you and you wound up saying yes, or, or was it always if you wanted to do it, I'm in? No, I would say no. It was different, Jimmy, back then because I mean, again, we had network television, ABC, CBS, NBC. I mean, it was that was such an incredible platform. Uh, for boxing, or for all sports, I should say, mm -hmm. mostly for, for boxing, I would say, and um, so, and then when the, the pay per view came in there, and I mean these things were taking place as it is today. They they getting the purses are getting larger and, and more incredible. And it's, I think it's all relative, you know, because now more people see you uh, globally now. Now it's it's worldwide. People see you and say, "Oh, I, yeah, I know you. I know you. I know you." I mean, it's like. I was on the uh, like as the years go by went by has gone by. I'm on the plane every now and then. Someone say, "Hey, Sugar, right? yeah, you're that dancer, right? Dance for the stars." <laughs> <laughs> you know, they don't know me from boxing. They know me from Dance for the Stars. Yeah, so, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> Let, let me ask you, how do you feel about that, by the way? Because I know you as a boxer. I didn't even know you were on Dancing with the Stars because I don't watch TV. But how do you feel about right. that? It was funny. It was great. I mean, hey. I, Listen, I I know what I've accomplished. Uh, especially, I mean, there's not I mean, everyone's not a boxing fan. It's like everyone's not a football fan, baseball fan. It's it's what it is. And uh, but I know I've made an impact in the boxing world. So you know, I, I'm I'm okay with that, Jim. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm sure you are. Well, I'll tell you a l little bit embarrassing for me because when I partnered with Bill Walton, it was, it was a business deal and I, and I wasn't a big follower of basketball. I didn't know much about Bill. And we went to a late, uh, oddly enough, uh, but we went to a Lakers game to watch his son and uh, we, we had nice seats and uh, Bill likes to leave a little early cause he moves slow. And uh, as we were walking out, we went up the, the bleachers about 30, 30 rows and he got a standing ovation and I'm smiling all the way to the top. And I thought, man, I got the right business partner here. <laughs> so, <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I was the one that didn't know how great he was, but, um, you know, when you, when you talk about boxing and business and, and you've certainly had, you know, long career, even up to dancing with the stars, by the way, mentally and physically, how, how do you prepare to be the person that, that you can be? Because, um, I just think that we all need little routines or helpful hints on how to prepare and physically and mentally to be the best that we can be. You know, that, that's, an, that's, it's intuitive. It's you, you gotta want it. I when I when I have big fights or or any or any fight I should say, you know I, I I it's like I treat it like a business. I try to find out your weak points, strong points, what I could do to kind of not allow you to hit me. And I can't, you know I court, I, and I almost choreograph the fight. It's I choreograph my fights. I break it down. I break it down. Uh, 
and I I send uh, my guys to watch, to observe them in their training camps to see what they do best, what they do not so good, and whether it's a, it's a fast jab, it's a right hand, uh, do I stay off the ropes, all those kind of things. I do my I do the, my due diligence, mm-hmm. and uh, which not doesn't always necessarily make it easier, but it's the most effective measure. You you jokingly yeah. talked about having a lot of comebacks. How do you come back mentally? Because we all get beaten down by challenges in life, yeah. and oftentimes people don't see those beat downs because they're either private or they're not public, like on NBC, ABC, as as you've gone through. So it, it has to be a thousand times worse um, to come back in professional sports. How do you get through that mentally? That's what it is. It's mentally. You know, you you have to truly believe in yourself because if you don't, no one else will. The fact that because of what I did, boxing, um, it, it's, it's a whole different mindset because I know, Jim, I knew, I should I knew prior to walking out of the uh, dressing room, I look in the mirror, and if I see the image of Sugar Ray Leonard, I can I can beat pretty much anyone. But if I see Ray Leonard, the, the uh, civilian, I'm like, wow, it's gonna be a pretty long night. <laughs> I had those I had those moments, and I've had those moments with Roberto, Roberto Duran, the second time in Hearns fight, uh, Wolf. I mean, um, like the Macho the Macho, my last fight. I mean, I I saw that image in that mirror, and uh, and I said, I wonder if we can postpone this for a couple of days. You know, I, I sometimes we we don't fill up to par. And, but that's in life. That's in everything. We sometimes we don't have that that eye of a tiger, if you will. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess you can't just turn around and go back in the dressing room and and uh, nope. postpone another day. It's got, game face has to be <laughs> yeah. on. You cannot. I, it would have made my life easier and better, but no, there was there was no way to change that. Well, and that was frightening. I tell you, Jim, that was frightening. I and I talk about you know I can talk about it because you know. You know, um, people don't want to talk about being scared. I, I was scared. I, that was a number of times I was scared. But then again, being scared is a good thing because it keeps me it keeps me alert. It keeps my eyes open. Yeah, and you know, I guess that's a question people probably often wonder about professional fighters: is you know, are you scared, knowing that you're going to go in the ring? And anything can happen because without that fear, you lose the edge. You can get too comfortable. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, you said that you were scared, and I don't even know how to expand upon that question because I, I think it's important to understand that as good as people are in their sports, there's still that fear of you know multiple things. And I appreciate your honesty on right. that. It's you know it, you know what it that's what it is, and it, because we can't. We as fighters, world champions, we we're not supposed to say that uh, that I'm scared that I'm this and that. And it's not scared like like a scaredy cat. It's just that anticipation, especially if it's a solid uh, um, opposition. It, you, there is a fear. That's 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 how we work. That's how we operate because we we stay out of harm's way. Um, most guys won't accept the fact that I'm scared. No, I'm not scared. No, I'm not scared. No, heck, heck no. But the veterans, the ones who've been there, because we don't, you know, we don't have that that, that cloak of invincibility over our heads anymore. We know that we can be beaten, but not until we get too old or too, you know, if, we, if we're just not there anymore. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, I I appreciate you sharing that. I I used to race professionally. Uh, off-road race cars, and I knew every time I got to the starting line that I was scared, but that gave yeah. me gave me an edge, and it also gave me the respect for what I was about to do, and that was to control the race car to the best of my abilities, which, by the way, I would be a lot more afraid to get in the rink because as soon as that bell hits, I know it, it's got to be on. That first punch is coming, whether you want it or not. <laughs> but it's the same, it's, but it, you know, and what you said, uh, you were scared too. Yeah, it's, it's but it's the same impact that we all have. All, anyone who's challenging anything of significance, there is a fear, fear factor, and that's good. That's not a bad thing. 
Yeah, for some reason you just jogged my memory. I uh, had met Evander Holyfield in person and had the opportunity to shake his hand. And all I remember walking away from him going, I could not imagine being hit by that man because his hand and arms were so big. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, what, what advice would you give to aspiring athletes or, or even fighters to, that, to be specific? You know, again, the first, the first thing is to believe in yourself because if you don't, no one else will. And you got to be willing to sacrifice, be willing to do what is necessary to win, to be victorious. And um, people ask me, but they, they say, you know, you know, how can I be? How can I be successful in life? You know, again, there are no shortcuts. You you, you have to just take it upon yourself to give yourself the best opportunity to walk away as a winner. You with me, Jim? you got to be ready to win, but you have to put the work in, too. Yeah, well, a- amen to that. You know, as I mentioned, stay, staying up late sometimes when you have to to get the job yeah. done because expectations the there. Yeah, I mean, there, there's, no, there's no reason or there's no, you know, there's no limitations. There's no, you have to do what is necessary to give yourself the best opportunity to win. That's in life too. That's in in, in marriage. You gotta, you know, you gotta sacrifice. You gotta be willing to participate in getting to be number one or being the best. If you don't mind, along these lines, uh, I had a call with David Meltzer this week. We mentioned him earlier on the show. He sent me a text after the call. I think it was a blast. But he says, "How bad do you want to be what you know you can be?" In order to pursue your potential and enjoy it, how bad do you want it? Most people make the mistake of thinking they can have conviction and convenience in the same plan. You must be willing to invest everything in yourself to be what you can be. Pretty powerful. (laughs) Well put. And I only expect that from David. Yeah. (laughs) You you, you have to be willing to to sacrifice. You have to be willing to, to... and not, I'm not saying pain, not physical pain, but just the pain of going through this over and over and over again until it's right. Until it, and you'll know it's right because it's like when you walk into the ring, a fighter walks to the ring. I know as I'm walking to that ring that I'm going to win or lose. I know. I feel it. And, um, and I felt that, plus, trust me, more times than not, mm-hmm. um, I, feel like, I, feel, I feel like a winner. I walk like a winner. My chin is up. And you walk with pride and conviction. And I give it 100% every time. You know, I think it's also important to walk with that same pride when you lose because you can make yourself better through the lesson that you've learned, right? Oh, man. I'm so <laughs> you know, this is so great, Jim, because that's true. It's the, I tell you what, for me as a fighter, when I did lose – which was not too many times, but when I did lose, like the first, my first professional loss was against Roberto Duran in 1980, June. And my friends said, you know, right, yeah, you know, it's a close fight, and this and that, and whatever. But when I'm by myself, you know, I, I, I release all my emotions. My, 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 I was so hurt. I was so confused. How did I lose this fight? The biggest fight of my, one of the biggest fights of my career to Roberto Duran, you know, it, it bothered me for, it bothered me for like almost like less than six, five months because I had a rematch in less than six months, mm-hmm. which was also unprecedented because fights of that magnitude, they don't take place for another year or go, go a few years later. But um, I went back in there with him less than five, six months later um, to win back my title. Hmm. You know, I just remembered why Dave sent me that. I'm up here in Montana going to ortho rehab and physical therapy. I tore my shoulder out, and uh, I'm working with a great guy. His name's Ben. But, um, I, you know, I was feeling a little down on myself because I'm in rehab working on my shoulder, and, and Dave sent that to me. It just came to mind. I was wow. w- wondering why he was being so yeah. heavy. <laughs> I get it, man. I get it. But you, it's made me a better person. It's made me a better uh, uh father a, a husband 
because we're gonna find we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna taste a little defeat every now and then, but just bounce back up, you know, get up for that knockdown. <laughs> 